Hey guys, and welcome to another one of my videos. So in this video, we'll be going over replication inside of Unreal. I've had many people on YouTube and in my Discord request videos on replication. So I thought I would go ahead and make one. Um, but instead of making a specific tutorial on how to do some specific game feature using replication, I thought I would just kind of take all the knowledge that I had on replication and compress it into a video, maybe break it down into parts and give you guys that. And that way, hopefully you can take this information and apply it to whatever type of feature you're trying to do. So with that being said, um, this isn't gonna be a tutorial in the sense of, you know, step by step by step exactly what to do in order to come up with some final result. It's more gonna be an information or an informative video um, that's just very generic on how to do these different replication um, things inside of Unreal. And I think that's kind of the best way to approach it. So we're gonna start out with something very simple and then kind of work our way up. So you can already see here kind of what I'm getting at. This is the first example. Um, but before we actually go into this, let me just close this real quick because I wanna make sure just in case you're totally new and you've never done anything with replication, then you won't even know how to launch Unreal correctly. So by default, if you just press play up here, you'll just get a window that pops up and you'll just be in a single player mode basically. So if you want to switch over to multiplayer, you can hit this drop down next to the play button. And then you want to set the number of players to at least two. Um, you can set it up to four, but for now we're just going to set it to two. And then you need to select the net mode to be something other than standalone. So standalone is essentially single player, um, but you have these other two options. So you can say play as listen server or play as client. So both of these are multiplayer, but the difference is that if you select play as server, or listen server rather, you're actually gonna be playing as the listen server. And if you don't know what a listen server is, it's basically a server that's also has a player playing on it. So if we just select this one real quick and hit play, you'll see we get two windows. Uh, mine are very different sizes because I've already scaled them ahead of time. But on the left here, we have the server, and on the right, we have the client. Oh, and if you wanna get two windows also, I have it set to new editor window. I think by default it's set to this one, but if you set it to this one, you'll get two new pop-up windows, which I think is a little bit easier to work with. Um, but anyways, going back to what I was saying, once you run it as a listen server, you'll see one of the windows will say server at the top for the net mode, and the other one will say client. So this one on the left here, it's actually the server as well. And that's why it's called a listen server. But if you just select play as client, you're still gonna get two windows, but you'll see they both say client. And that's because the server is a dedicated server in this case, and it's actually kind of behind the scenes. Um, you, can, you There are ways to bring it up in the console window, but it's not uh, it's not actually rendering anything because there's nobody playing on it. Um, there's plenty of tutorials out there for listen servers versus dedicated servers, and that's not really the point of this tutorial. The point of this tutorial is replication. So for this tutorial, we're gonna do listen server. So we'll select this one just so we can see what's happening on the server, and then we can go ahead and press play. Okay, so in this first example, we're going to cover um, variable replication and also just kind of replication in general for actors. So you can see I have a little example here, and on the left I have my server, and on the right I have my client. And you'll see there's this box here, and when I go up on the server and I hit this box, it changes colors, like so. And then there's some information above it, which is... Um, just showing you the relevant information about this box, and we'll kind of cover each one of these things one at a time. Um, but you'll notice on the right, the box isn't even showing up at all. And that's because replication is totally disabled for this box, so only the server can see it. So let's go through step-by-step step exactly how you would get something like this to replicate to the clients. So the first thing you'll notice, actually, let me play this again. The first thing you'll notice is at the top here above the box, it says the net load on client is set to false. So that's a very important thing to know about. Um, if we click on this blueprint, which I've created earlier, and we go to the class defaults on the right here. So all actors will have this replication section. And by default, it will look like this, but it will also have net load on client set to true. Because I've actually unchecked this just to show you what happens if you don't check this. But like I said, I believe by default, all actors have this checked. So what this does, um, if it's checked, it's basically saying that, well, you can see right there, the actor will be loaded on network clients during the map load. So if you don't check this, then actors won't be loaded for clients. That's exactly why it wasn't showing. So if we play it now, you'll see now the client can see the box as well. Um, but if I go up and I run into it like before, you can see 
it's changing colors for the server still. It's also changing colors for the client, but it's changing a different color. Like they're not in sync, right? Like one's kind of orange and one's kind of purple. Um, and same with the client. So if the client were to come over here and hit this guy, it works as well for him, but they're changing to different colors, right? So the reason that's happening is because, well, yes, the, the box is loaded on the client, but there's nothing that's keeping it in sync um, after it's loaded. So we need to start fixing that. So there's a bunch of things you need to do. Well, not a bunch, but there's a, there's a decent amount of things you need to do in order to get something to replicate. And this is a very simple example, so I thought we'd do this first. So the first thing we wanna fix is we wanna make it so that the server is the only one detecting collision for this box. Because you'll notice if the client comes over and hits this box, it's still changing colors. And the reason, it's, the reason that's happening is because the client is also detecting collision. So let's look at this code real quick. So if we go to the event graph of our box, so there's really not a lot of code here, this is all there is. Let me move this over so we can see. So the begin play, you don't really have to worry about. All this is doing is it's creating the dynamic material just so we can change the color of it. And then it's linking that little widget we created so it knows um, that the, the cube it's referencing is ourselves. So this really has nothing to do with replication inside the begin play. The really important part is down here inside of begin overlap. So you can see when we overlap with the box, we get a random color and then we set our current color variable to that. And then we do this, which if you've never seen this before, all this is doing is it's taking that color material that we created above and it's saying set the parameter inside of it for color to whatever value we generated. And so what's happening is when the server hits the box or when the client hits the box, it's doing this calculation. So even though the box exists on the client and the server, each one of them is doing their own um, random color generation whenever they hit it, which is why you get totally different colors, right? Because they're not in sync. They're both just doing their own, totally doing their own thing. So in order to fix that, in order to make it so that they're in sync, um, we wanna make it so that the collision only happens on the server, right? So to do that, there is this handy little node called switch has authority. So authority basically means that, I'm probably gonna mess this up. <laughs> if you Google Unreal Engine authority, it will probably give you a better definition. But in most cases, it means that um, if, if, if it's authority, it means that you're on the server. That's not always the case, um, but m for right now, just think of it as you're on the server. So we'll say switch has authority and then hook that up. So what this is gonna do is when we overlap with the box, we will check if we are on the server. And if we are, then we will set the color. So let's see what it does now. So on the server, if we go over and we hit it, you can see we change colors, which is good. However, the client is not changing colors. And again, if I do it on the client, you can see the server changes colors, but the client is not changing colors. So the reason this is happening is because we've just told it to only do the collision check on the server, which is on the left, right? So whenever a player hits the box, um, it's only doing the collision on the left, and so the box is only changing colors on the left. So this is the first step we need to do. I know it looks like it's getting worse, but it's actually getting closer to correct replication of the color. So now that we have the color only changing on the server, and we have one source of truth, we now need to make it so that that color gets replicated to the client. So the next step is we need to enable replication for this actor, because right now, although it's loaded on the client, there's no replication enabled for it, so nothing we do inside the actor is ever gonna get replicated. So again, we can go to the class defaults and we can look under the replication section and we have some options here. So the, the really important one is replicates, right? So you can see if you hover over it, it says, if true, this actor will replicate to remote machines. So let's try checking this and then compile save and let's try running this again and see if anything changes. So if we come over here on the server and we hit this, you can see still pretty much working as before. The server can hit it and change the color. The client can change the color, but only when he hits it, or only when you're viewing it from the server. So really nothing's changed at all. It's working exactly as it did before, even though we enabled replication. So why is that? Well, if you, all you do is enable replication, you're basically just saying, hey, this actor supports replication, but by default, Unreal is not going to replicate um, you know, it's not just gonna replicate anything you add. Like if you make the box jump or grow or shrink or rotate or change colors, like 
by default, it's not going to replicate any of that for you because it doesn't know you want it to replicate. And if it tried to replicate everything for you automatically, then your game would be, you know, it would take up way too much um, bandwidth and, you know, your game would just die because you can't just replicate everything. There's You really only want to replicate the things you absolutely need to. So it's not just going to automatically replicate everything you do on the server. So we want to tell it specifically, hey, we want you to replicate the color. So to do that, we have this color variable here, if you remember. So when we overlap it, we say, hey, make sure we're on the server. And then we get a random color. And then we set this current color. So what if we just say, hey, take this current color variable and let's replicate this variable. So we've enabled replication for the actor, which is the cube, but we can also enable replication for individual variables inside of an actor. And you can do that by just clicking on the variable either here or here. And then in the de details panel, there's a replication dropdown. And there's three options here. So by default, it's always none, which just means there's, you know, it's not replicated. And then there's replicated, and then there's rep notify. So we're gonna start with replicated, and then we'll explain what this one means later. But for now, let's just try setting this variable to replicated. Uh, and one thing to note, when you do that, you'll get two little white uh, balls on the variable. And that's just a little icon that tells you that this variable is replicated. So we can compile and save, and we can try it again, and we'll see if anything changes. So when we go and we hit it, you'll notice one thing did change. So if you look on the right, on the client, you'll notice that although the cube is not changing colors, that little um, piece up here, if you look up here, this is actually changing to the correct color. So why is that? Well, what's happening is we've told the color variable to replicate. So the variable itself is replicating and that variable is linked to this little green section up here. Um, in the UI. So every frame in the UI is grabbing that variable and displaying it up here. So the color is being sent over, but we're never actually applying it to the box on the client. So although the client knows what the color is, there's no code running on the client to actually change the color of the queue. And likewise, if the client hits it, you can see it works pretty much as you would expect. The box is not changing colors, but the color above in the information panel is working and it's in sync with the server. So we're really close. So now all we need to do is make it so the actual box changes to the color that's shown above. So the reason this isn't working, like I said, is because all we're doing is we're just setting the color on the server and yes, it's replicating, but then this code only runs on the server, right? Because we have a switch authority here, we set the color on the server, this color gets replicated to the clients, but then only the server sets the color of the actual box, which is what this does. So this is when rep notify comes in handy. So we click on this guy. We had that other option over here called rep notify. Um, and the difference is that um, rep notify, it replicates the variable just like the replicated option, but it also notifies you when the variable is replicated. So if you notice, oh, let me delete this because this was left over from before, sorry. So if you notice when we hit rep notify, if you look on the left under functions, it will automatically create an on rep underscore current color. And it named it that because our variable is called current color. So basically auto generated this function for us. And if we double click on this function, um, you can see it's just empty by default. But what's happening is that whenever the color variable changes on the server, and then whenever it gets replicated to a client, this function is gonna run on that client. So if we take the code that changes the color of the box and put it inside of this function, then whenever the server changes the color of the box, this function is going to get called, and then we can also change the color of the box, being the client. So all we need to do is take this code right here, and I'm going to cut this, and then we don't need these little nodes anymore. And I'm going to go inside of the onRep function, paste them here, and then for the value, we want to set it to our current color because again, this function is telling us that this variable specifically has just been replicated to us. So we're saying, okay, this variable has been replicated to us. Let's set the color of our box to whatever color has been replicated to us. So now if we press play and we hit it on the server, you can see now it's working as expected. So the color is getting replicated and the rep notify is actually changing the color of the box. And likewise, when the client hits it, it is changing the color correctly. And so one thing to note here, because I know it might be a little confusing, but um, 
the all the collision is only happening on the server. So even though if you're looking at the right side here, it looks like the box changes colors whenever we hit the box on the right. That's not actually what's happening. Um, the collision is only happening on the server. Um, it's just really hard to tell because they're so in sync with each other. But a good way to kind of demonstrate this, and this is also a really useful thing to know about replication, is if you come up here to the play button and you go to advanced settings, you can come down to, let's see, multiplayer options, and then under enable network emulations, I believe this is normally set to false. I have everything set to zero, so it doesn't matter. But you can set this to true, and this will kind of simulate a laggy network, more or less. So you can set the minimum latency. So we'll just set this to 200 and 200 for the incoming traffic and 200, 200. So this is how many milliseconds it's gonna kind of simulate um, when sending and receiving packets. Because um, it's all local on my computer, so it's not actually sending packets out over the network. But this allows you to simulate it to see what would happen, you know, if you were playing with somebody on the other side of the world, right? Like, because a 200 ping is obviously really high. And I think this is actually a 400 ping because it's 200 plus 200. Actually, let's bump this up really high so we can really easily see this. Let's say 500 milliseconds. This is completely unrealistic um, ping. This is like a full second of ping. So if we press play now, um, you'll see the client actually takes a while to join because of the, the high simulated ping. And you can see right away, if I just jump on the client, you can see how long it takes for the server to see it, right? So if you pay close attention, um, I'm going to move on the right over here and I'm going to collide with the box. And you'll notice if you're looking at just the right screen, don't look at the left screen, just, just look at the right screen, the client, you notice the box doesn't actually change colors when he hits it. So here, I'll do it real quick. You can see it waited a while. I'll do it again. Right? And the reason that's happening is because the box doesn't change colors when the client hits it on the client screen because this collision is only happening on the server. So what's happening is that if you look at the left screen, you'll see when the server sees that the client hits it, then the server immediately changes the color because that's where the collision's happening on the left side. And then it has to send it back to the client. So the client has to wait for the server to send it back to it. So if you have a high ping, you'll actually notice, you can actually see what's happening. Like the packets are actually taking a while to happen. So, so don't think that the client is the thing that's colliding with the box and then telling the server, hey, I collided with the box, change your color. No, it's the other way around. The server is telling the client, hey client, you just collided with this box, go ahead and change your color. So it's just kind of an important thing to understand, um, especially if you're trying to fix some sort of bugs, like everything is going from the server to the client. The client is really not doing anything here in terms of this color, color stuff, other than listening to the color from the server and changing the box. Okay, so that's um, variable replication which again is like the most simple form of replica replication. Um, I think next we're probably gonna go over function replication and we'll just do that in part two. So I'll see you guys in part two.